Hey Wompers, in this video I'm showing you how you can create your very own character base, including a lot of tips and tricks on creating in general. I'll then also show you how we can quickly turn this into an animal version or basically start customizing it. Are you excited? Let's dive straight in and feel free to follow along. So let's start and go to the top bar where we find our primitives menu. We grab a curve primitive and the first thing that I'm gonna do with curves is delete the second point, go to the settings. Here we can change it to a cylinder based curve and I'm going ahead and increase roundness, density and bring group strength to around 10. Now, since we're starting with the face of the character, I'm bringing this up a little bit and then going into point one where we add roundness to 100. Now at this point you might ask why not just use a sphere if it's rounded anyways. Um, but with a rounded cylinder we have a bit more shape control. The second point here we make a bit smaller and we bring it to the back of the head. Then the third point we bring forwards again. And in that way we create this really nice um, simple little character head base that's uh, very stylized, maybe a bit into the chibi kind of direction. And I think it looks really, really nice. You can also play around with where you exactly want to place your shape or also with the scaling. This is why we chose the cylinder. And yeah, I think this looks lovely. So now let's click onto the union in the scene list and get out a new cylinder. Um, since we click the union, it will automatically be inside of the union when we get it out. And I'm then also activating the mirror for this one in the object's properties menu at the right. So now we simply drag the shape to the right and we see the mirror is working. We rotate it to a 90 degrees angle. You can rotate in 45 degrees angles if you hold down shift. You can do equal scaling if you hold down alt. Also that would be shift on a Mac as well. Then we also round this up to 100 and we roughly place it where we imagine the ears to be. Now, at this point, it maybe looks a bit like an ape or something, a bit cute. Um, so we bring it in there, so it's like half moons, and then we also rotate it a bit back. I think that makes it look a bit more natural. I'm also rotating it a bit to, to the back as well, and then to add a little more detail, we just make another copy of the ears, and we turn the copy into a negative, and that way we can make a little hole into it. So um, for the negative, we just scale it a bit smaller. So we have a bit of an edge around it almost. And we can also increase a little bit of group strength, maybe four or five. And I think that's looking good. Oh, but wait, now we actually did cut into the head. Well, there's an easy fix for that. We just take our ear shapes and we bring it above the curve that's making the head. In that way, they won't cut into it because negatives only affect everything above them in the scene list. I'm then making a copy of our head curve and bring it outside of this union because now we're going to build the body with that. So I just named the unions as well so we have a better overview if we want to make edits later on. I'm then going into the body curve and I'm changing it to a cube based curve just so I have another different kind of um, option to adjust the shape. And that is really the lovely thing about curves and us making them primitive based because it gives us such huge shape, uh, shape control while still having it smooth with the roundness as well. So for the body, I basically just use two points here. The first one is fairly small and at the bottom it goes wider. Very easy. Um, we're then making another copy and those will be the legs. So we call this union legs and I'm switching this back to a cylinder based curve. Now, the reason why um, you always wanna copy things is because that's just better for the workflow because you keep the same settings of the curve. You also keep the position and can just keep going. For the legs, I also turned on the mirror because obviously we can make two legs at the same time and that works just fine. Um, and I just brought everything up so we have a bit more space. I'm then bringing the first point into position. I also decreased the roundness a little bit so they are a bit more cylinder based. Making another copy and here I'm just experimenting a little bit with what looks right. 
The cool thing about such a character base is that you can always make changes to it so easily and so fast. Um, I'm also copying another cylinder now right where we at the bottom just to indicate the feet. So I'm bringing out a cylinder and I'm scaling it down a little bit, also um, decreasing roundness as well. So I think that looks really lovely, but yeah, we can always go back in and easily change the pose just by moving a few points or rotating them. Also just quickly bringing this back to the ground and moving the feet uh, the legs a bit inwards just because I thought they were a bit wide and then I'm also, as you can see, making changes to the thickness of it, just making it a bit, a bit thinner. Uh, also make sure to check your legs from the side and if they're sitting right. Um, but now we can easily continue with the arms as well. We just basically copy this union again, we bring it up and here we have our arms. <laughs> No, we're obviously gonna make a few changes here, but we can already work with it. So if we bring this back a little bit, it almost makes it look like an elbow or a more natural pose as well. If we change the point one, maybe to be a bit thinner and to bring it outwards a little more, it almost looks like they're having shoulders now. And the hands I'm keeping very simple. We will probably have a hand tutorial coming fairly soon as well. So, um, but for now, let's keep them simple for the base as well. The only thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add two very uh, thin cylinders here and I'm gonna make it a negative and that way we kind of point towards splitting the thumb to the rest of the hand. Looks a bit like Lego kind of hands as well. <laughs> That's why I'm moving it a little bit um, inwards. I've then just given the whole character default material and what I would also highly recommend you is to put all of our body parts here, all of our body curves and the rest of the primitives inside of one union and call that body as well. Now you can group those things together into a group and call them human or character, whatever you prefer. I'm not making a quick copy of this, dragging it to the side. So I actually wanna show you how we can transform this into an animal version or maybe even start the customization on your character in a way. So for that, I'm starting to add some ears. Looks a bit like a teddy bear or Mickey Mouse, maybe. Um, it's cylinder based curves. So I'm just adding another point and another third point that I'm scaling super, super small. And that way we achieve those kind of classic animal ears or um, yeah, cat-like ears, maybe. I'm also rotating them, rotating backwards and outwards a little bit, makes it look even cuter. And we do the same trick of also basically making a copy, making a negative, um, making that a bit smaller and then, yeah, just grouping them and bringing them above the rest in the scene list so they don't cut into the head. I'm then also adding some kind of fur. This is how you can add some stylized fur basically, just with the same technique, rounded cylinders, make it very thin at the very end of it, and then just scale it into position, rotate it a little bit, make some copies. And this is how you can create some very stylized uh, basic fur. Now, just creating a quick tail using a sphere-based curve this time, giving it a really nice flow and at the end, bringing a very thin curve to yeah round it up as a tail. You can then also really just move the individual points and yeah create that lovely form and flow in them as well. So here's a quick look at the character bases that I did. The human and the animal one from the front and the back. I think they turned out really lovely and I'm happy that all of you can be using them now as well. I will publish them as remixable on the Discover page. Here's how you can enter them when you see them on the Discover page or search for them. You can click on the three dots and then just click Remix. You will then be guided into a new scene where you have them open. As you can see, you can just click into the animal version or the human version and just edit it from there. The other way is if you're already in a scene, you can go to Objects, My Scenes, um, here you would add your very own assets that you created or you go to community and search for character base. That would be if you want my version here of the character base. And then you can just load it into your scene and oh my god, they are giants compared to the default cube. You can of course scale them as well. 
But yeah, this is it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. We might also have an interesting event coming up, so please be excited for that. And we can't wait to see your characters on the Discover page. With that, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.